game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports. All right, subscribe. so another beautiful day here in paradise. You know, got some big things in the works here on True School Sports, but um, let's talk this boxing, man. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of things to discuss. Uh, wanted to talk about, you know, one of our favorite fighters to talk about on this channel because we talked about him so many times for such a long period of time here on youtube and that's none other than the monster himself naya in a way uh it's signed still delivered we have everything secured as far as details he's he's went ahead and announced his next fight and much to, to the dismay of many people naya in a way's next fight is against the 37 year old veteran irishman tj doheny and also the former world champion tj doheny now this isn't a fight that people were clamoring for i mean and, and truth be told I think if you talk to the lion's share of boxing fans, most boxing fans don't even care for in a way at 122. He's proved everything he needed to prove at 122. And a, a lot of people, such as myself, are eager to see him become a featherweight. But in a way, Hideki Ohashi and, and, and their team, they're being very smart and, and diligent and tactful about the whole situation. And they're gonna let in a way fill out to his full capacity as a as a 126 pounder, as a 122 pounder before he goes up to 126 and fights those bigger guys. So he's fighting Doheny. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how, how did TJ Doheny get this fight? Because TJ Doheny is, you know, former world champion, yes. Um, but he's got four losses, and 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 people are gonna look at other guys in the division, such as Merge on Akhmadaliev, who's WBA mandatory, and we'll get into that as well. But Doheny got this fight because Doheny has been winning a lot of fights in Japan against um, you know, and he's been knocking out and beating up, you know, Japanese fighters guys that have, were undefeated like uh Jafet Lamido from uh the Philippines I believe he's Filipino he was 11 to no one uh Doheny beat him and he was an Inoue sparring partner so that probably got him on Inoue's radar the fight before that he won the WBO Asia Pacific title against Kazuki Nakajima who was like 14 and one good record um before that fight he he he, he had a, a a spirited competitive fight with sam goodman lost and before that fight he knocked out the veteran caesar rocky Huada. so tj dohany's no slouch he, he he's he's gonna come to fight he's gonna he's gonna come forward and um i think and and this is why guys i want to i want to kind of go back to one of my original points about in from a couple videos ago i've been saying in my lives i've been saying about in at 122 after the topolis fight that pretty much any fight he has at 122 after the topolis fight i'm just gonna take it for what it is i'm not gonna be overly excited no will i be overly dismissive i'm just gonna take it for what it is i'm gonna enjoy it so that's that's kind of how i treated the nary fight and that's how i'm gonna treat this fight i think i think the haney he knows that you know and, and congrats to him he's been a hard-working fighter for a lot of years and and this will probably be his last fight, it's a big payday. Um, I'm sure he's gonna give it all he's got and he's gonna go in there and bring the fight to Inoue and it'll be a fun fight for as long as it lasts. Um, and we saw in Inoue's last fight against Neri that if he's not careful, he can get dropped. He, that happened against, um, what's it called? That happened against Neri, right? So he's gonna get more practice against a, a, a dangerous, you know, aggressive Southpaw like TJ Doheny and it should really be a good fight. now. Let's talk about because people keep saying, why is in a way not fighting Merch Akhmadaliev? Now, just before I get into my the emotional side of this, because y'all know how I feel about Merge on, let's call a spade a spade. TJ Dohaney, if it were any other fighter in boxing that was fighting a, that kind of, a, of opponent, um, they would call it a cherry pick. But because it's in a way, he's getting a pass. Now, did TJ Dohaney. Does he deserve the fight more than Merge Akhmadaliev, who is the, 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 the WBA mandatory? I think he does, honestly. I think I think he's had a better run of form. I think he's been fighting better fighters. I think um, he's been having better performances. As to where Merge on, Merge on hasn't really done anything uh, since he, since Merge on became mandatory. He really didn't even have to do a whole lot to become mandatory because he lost to Marlon Topolis, lost his belts, which by the way. He could have unified them belts and fought Stephen Fulton and, and, and done something to, to, to really put himself in the driver's seat to get an in-a-way fight. He didn't do that. He sat on the belt. He thought he was, he was smarter than he was. He was filing exemptions. So then he fights Marlon Topolos in a fight that he thought he was he, that he would win. His team and him thought they were being smart. They weren't being smart. They were being quite foolish. 
and uh, he lost. And then he put himself in a very disadvantageous position. So now that he now that he didn't do what he's supposed to do, he beats Kevin Gonzalez, a good little Mexican fighter who was like 27 and one. And he just gets gifted a WBA mandatory position, which he did not deserve. And the reason I say he doesn't deserve it is because I watch a lot of fighters, you know, particularly in you know around these weight classes. Like I, I, I'll give you an example right now. You guys know I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I'm cool with Angelo Leo and whatnot. I'm watching him fight, you know, three times in five months, and he, he's having to fight tooth and nail to get a, t a shot. But then meanwhile, Merge on just fights one random, you know, d guy with a decent record, and he just gets a mandatory shot. So this is a, uh, this is a whole accumulation of merge on not doing what he was supposed to do merge on didn't unify the title steven fulton and even if he wasn't unifying the title steven fulton he didn't even fight and he wasn't active enough to build that momentum to build that momentum and go ahead and you know build that that profile for himself he didn't do none of that so how on god's green earth are you guys going to say he's getting screwed out of an NOA fight? He's not getting screwed out of an NOA fight. He did this to himself by not unifying with Fulton, by not staying by not staying active. And I know he had injuries, but not staying active, not unifying with Fulton, losing the Topolis fight, and then you get gifted a mandatory shot, and you just think you're, you're going to get an NOA fight. Nah, man. Nah. So it is what it is. Um, I feel like if he wants an NOA fight, go go win at least one more big fight. Go fight another guy in the top two, in the top three, and, and really stick your flag in the ground and let the world know, hey, I'm Roger Akhmadali if I'm one of the baddest... MFers at 122, and um, then, then we can talk about an NOA fight because NOA, I don't think it's going up his next fight either. I think he's got maybe this fight and another fight, and then maybe by like the middle of 2022 or, or 20, not 2022, 2025, I should say, then he'll go up. But um, that's really what I think. That, that's what I think. So, uh, yeah, the Doheny fight will be a fun fight while it lasts. Um, there's some good fights on the undercard, which I'll talk about in separate videos, but uh, yeah, th those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Um, it's funny that, and, and I'll, uh, last thing I'll say here is, it's funny that you guys cry and complain about mandatories not being honored, but when it was Phil Hergovich not getting screwed for years with the IBF, y'all didn't care. When it's Otari Renosian getting screwed from WBA at 130, y'all don't care. But let it be Merge on, and Merge on want to kick and scream and cry and complain. Now, now, now honoring mandatories is a thing in boxing. So that's my. That's my problem with people is they pick and choose when they want mandatories honored. So I'll leave it at that. Y'all, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys pay the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Box Hall of Fame out here in Canfield, New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.